Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm super excited. I'm going to show you how to make a photorealistic diamond ring, a very luxury ring in Blender 4.0. So this is going to be part one, by the way, where we'll just tackle the actual modeling of this ring, which is going to be really straightforward. And then there's going to be a part two where I'm going to show you how to do this fantastic material setup here and kind of get this really nice colorful sparkle to the diamonds. And we'll even do a little bit of compositing to make the final render look even better. So if this is something you want to learn, keep watching. And my Patreon file for the final result, the actual blend file, will be on my Patreon. So that's also in the description if you guys are interested in supporting the channel. But let's jump in and make this fancy luxury diamond ring in Blender 4.0. So let's jump into Blender and we're going to select all the default objects and press delete. Let's go Shift A and under our mesh options, let's add in a circle. Let's go into edit mode by pressing tab. And then with everything active, we're going to go R, X, 9, 0 and press enter. And then let's press one to go into our front or graphic view. So one on the number pad and let's go E to extrude, S to scale and extrude it in about this much. And then we're going to just select half of it and we're going to press delete vertices. Let's go to our modifier. And uh, let's just go add modifier and type in M I R click on mirror and let's enable clipping. And by default, it's set to the X axis. Then we're going to press A to select everything and go E to extrude it like so. And let's just press X and delete those faces while it's active. And then let's enable the mirror for the Y axis, turn off clipping for a second and then press A to select everything G Y and move it forward and then enable clipping again. So now if we go to our right orthographic view, you can see we can move these together and kind of clip them. So now it's mirroring on the X axis and the Y axis. So in our front view, let's go ahead and turn on proportional editing and let's go into wireframe and just select some of these verts down here and go G and just kind of move them out a little bit just to kind of thicken the base up just slightly like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into a right off graphic view and select some of these bottom faces and go S, Y and scale them on the Y with proportional editing enabled still and just kind of thicken the base up a little bit. And then at the top, we're just going to go G, Y and just kind of move it in slightly. So we have kind of like this sort of shape going on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our edge select option and we're going to go over here, shift alt and left click on this edge and left click on this edge with shift alt enabled. Then we can go control B to create a slight bevel like so. And then let's go to our vertex select option and in wireframe select these verts at the top at the very front. Let's go X and delete those verts. And now we have this. So let's go to modifiers, go add modifier, search and type in sub. Let's get a subdivision surface modifier. And for now, let's tab out, right click and go shade smooth. Now, thankfully we don't actually have to model the diamond because Blender comes with a feature. So let's go edit preferences. Let's go to our add-ons and, and then under your search here, you can just go ahead and type in extra and you're going to see add mesh extra objects as an uh, option here. I've already enabled it. If yours isn't, just go ahead and click on here to enable that little box. And then what you can do is you can go shift a and then go to your mesh and then go down. You should now see an option for diamonds and you're going to go brilliant diamond. And then you're going to go G Z in your front view. S to scale that guy down. And at this point, I recommend that you make the stone, let's go about that big. We want this a little bit bigger than usual, like that. And then we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a mesh circle. G, Z, move it up. Tab into edit mode, go to your vertex option. I'm gonna turn off proportional editing. S to scale it down. And we're just going to have this kind of just up at the rim, like so. E to extrude and Z to extrude it down a bit. Then E to extrude and Z go down even more as to scale. Let's go about this much. And let's go ahead and select this edge over here. Control B to create a bevel. Roll the middle mouse button for a segment. And then let's select this edge up here and go E to extrude as to scale just a little bit. E to extrude S to scale a little bit more. And then in our front view, in wireframe, let's just go E to extrude and Z. And let's just go S to scale that slightly like so. And let's go ahead and select this bottom edge over here, E to extrude S to scale. And then E to extrude S to scale. 
G, Z, move it down a bit, and let's just press F to fill that face. And let's just tab out, select our diamond, and just tab into edit mode, and just grab this blotted vertex and just tuck it up a little bit. So now we have this. Let's grab this guy over here, which created this um, holder. Let's go to our modifiers and type in sub and get a subdivision surface. And let's grab our gem here and just scale it down just a little bit. And inside of here, I'm just going to select this edge that runs along here. And I might just scale it just a little bit just to make it look a bit thicker in there. Just something like that. And I'm going to right click in object mode and go shade smooth. And now we have this. And I might just grab this and go E to extrude as a scale just to clean it up a little bit. So now we have kind of like the cup that holds this gem. But now we can make it look even fancier by let's grabbing our ring here. Let's go into edit mode and let's for now go to our mirror, turn off clipping and go shift A. Let's just add in a cube or a plane. I should have said plane. We are going to add in a plane. Then I'm going to go X and delete only the faces. And then we have this guy over here, which we're going to go S to scale down. And we're going to just go to our top view. And let's go G and move it over here. Now you can see it's being mirrored on all the other axes. So now we can turn on clipping again. And what we're going to do now, we're going to go to our front view. In the orthographic, we're going to go G and move it up to about here, S to scale it. About this big. And then we're going to come about here. And we're going to go E to extrude. And then E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, E to extrude, R to rotate, and then E to extrude till these two snap together over here. And then we're going to go shift alt, click on this edge, and then enable proportional editing. Make it connected only under this option, and then go G, Y, and move it in, like so, with proportional editing till it touches. And then let's grab an edge here, like so. And let's just go G and move it out with proportional editing till it just kind of neatly tucks up in here. And then you can select this edge here and go to your top view. You can slightly rotate it and then go E to extrude it in to the ring like so. And just kind of tuck it in here. And something like that looks really neat. Then we can go ahead and just go Shift Alt. Let's left click on one of these edges to select it. Shift D to duplicate and move it over. Let's go to our front view and go R to rotate it so it's a bit flatter. Let's go G and move it up here. And then in our top view, we're going to go and move it over here, S to scale it up a bit. And this is going to be kind of like the holder up here like this. So we're going to go E to extrude it up. And then S to scale a bit. And then E to extrude S to scale. And then press F to fill that. And then let's select this bottom loop of edges. And in our front view, we're going to go E to extrude down, S to scale a bit, and then E to extrude, R to rotate. And let's just keep extruding and rotating, S to scale it down a bit, and let's keep going. Extrude again, R to rotate, and let's keep going till these meet together here, like so. And then with proportional editing, and with this bottom edge still active, we're going to go G, Y and roll it in with proportional editing till we have about this much influence and just tuck it in over here and down a bit. And that's it. Now we have these nice little holders here that we can kind of um, just makes it look really nice. Bring in a little bit like so. So let's tab out. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And now that's looking really cool. And what we could do now is add in some more diamonds here on the side. So let's grab the main diamond. Let's go to our front view. Shift D to duplicate, S to scale it way down, R to rotate it, and let's go G and move it in here, like so. And let's maybe scale it a bit more, so just having it right in here. And if this isn't working here, you can grab this, select any vertex on the ring, Control L to select it, and then Control I to inverse the selection. Press H to hide, and then in your uh, right or for graphic, let's just grab some of this and go G and just move it a little bit more forward. Just create a little bit more space for our um, diamonds here, like so. Then let's go to our face select option and select this face, this face, this one, and this one. Turn off proportional editing and let's go E to extrude, S to scale, and then G, Y, and move it in. 
And let's go E to extrude and just extrude in like so and tab back out. And now we can go ahead in our front view and let's just maybe move this in a little bit and up. Let's go ahead to our modifiers and give it a mirror modifier. Click on the eyedropper and select a gem so it mirrors in the center. And now we can go Shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, and now let's just create a few more diamonds going down, sitting in this cavity. So hopefully we can get about four in here, at least. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A and add in a UV sphere. Let's go to add UV sphere options here. Let's make it something like 16. By 16 and then we're going to go S to scale that down go to our top view and then go G to move it in here let's move it up and we're going to put this as a little prong that we're going to scale right in here now let's go into our front view rotate it a bit move it in then you're just going to tab into edit mode and select a vertex at the bottom control plus to greater selection a few times and then let's go E to extrude S to scale and then E to extrude and just kind of make like a little prong. Then go to your top view and let's enable proportional editing and just shape this a little bit towards the front and just kind of make it look like it's squished in here between the diamonds like this. There we go, like a little peg. And then we're gonna tab out and with this active, we're gonna hold in shift and select a ring and go control J to join it. And now it shares that mirror modifier and a right click and go shade smooth. And then tab into edit mode and just select the vertex, control L to select the whole thing. And then in our front view, we can go shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, and then just put one wherever there's a spacing between these diamonds, like so, all the way down to here. And obviously we don't wanna forget up here. We also wanna place one right at the end here, up in here like so. And now if we tab back out, we can see we have these little prongs holding everything together and it looks a lot better, okay? So, it's at this point where you can finesse your um, ring however you want. Um, you know, get in here, add some of your own flair, your own style, but more or less, I think this looks really good. So in edit mode, you can go Alt H, by the way, just to bring all of these guys back as we had them before. But yeah, this is a very nice way to make a relatively fancy looking ring. Um, make sure to edit things however you think would work for what you're going for. But more or less, this is kind of like the design concept that we have in mind. So there is our fancy diamond ring. Let's go Shift A, add in a empty as in a cube, and then let's um, press A to select everything because it's just our ring. And holding in shift, make sure to empty is active and go control P and then go object, keep transform. So this way we can grab our empty and we can rotate it. And let's rotate it like so and everything should go along. And while we're still in the front view, we're gonna go shift A and under our camera option, let's add a camera, move it back and then go into camera view and then just press G to move your camera. And then get whatever position you like, but we're kind of going for front on view like this. Honestly, you can position this ring however you want to. It's completely your choice, but I'm gonna go with something kind of at a bit of an angle like this. I think it looks good. So anyway, I'll see you guys in part two. We're gonna be adding a fantastic looking material to this. We'll be adding a diamond material that we'll create that'll really make this pop and look really good. And we're also gonna do a little bit of compositing in the rendering to make this, after the rendering, to make it really uh, stand out and make a really realistic looking um, kind of render. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to watch part two. And as always, I'll upload my final uh, blend file to my Patreon as well. All of that's in the description.